wanted to go to an Ivy League school? If so, in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about where is the bar that you have to jump over to potentially get into an Ivy League school. My name is Brooke. I've been coaching people for a long time, over a decade, trying to help them get into places like Harvard, Columbia, Princeton, Yale, Brown, Penn, Dartmouth, and Cornell. If you want to go to an Ivy League school, one of the things that I will say can help is a great test score. And we have two online courses for the SAT and the ACT at supertutortv.com. We also have two books for the ACT math section. If you're prepping for that, you can find them on amazon.com. So we are here to help you get your test scores up as well as to give you the insider tips for college right here on our YouTube. Make sure you subscribe here and follow us on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe to our totally free mailing list, supertutortv.com slash subscribe and we'll keep you in the know of our newest videos and latest tips. If you're wondering what the Ivy League is, if you're not sure, it's an athletic conference. It's not actually a badge of a school's ranking or level independently. There are plenty of schools that actually rank in the same caliber as Ivy League schools, Stanford, MIT, Caltech. Some even have more competitive admission rates than many of the Ivies. This week I was talking to a mom and she basically told me that her daughter needs to go to an Ivy League school. And I said to her, then can we add Cornell and Dartmouth to the list? And she said, my daughter's not Cornell material. My first tip, if you really wanna to go to an Ivy League school is give me more lottery tickets to work with. One of the things about getting into Ivy League schools that you need to know if you're applying to them is that they are stupid competitive. I don't care how smart you are, how smart your kid is. You can be super crazy smart and not get into these schools. You can have a perfect GPA, you can have a near perfect test score, and that is not enough in a lot of cases. So I'm gonna do my best to try to help you guys understand what factors do go into this besides those obvious markers. But I think it's important to know that the first thing that you need to do is buy more lottery tickets. And what do I mean by lottery tickets? Apply to more Ivies. Don't just apply to one. Why do you need to apply to more than one? Over the last 80 years, admission rates have dropped like crazy. And they just keep going down, 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 down. And COVID-19 and test optional policies haven't helped. They've made it even worse. We've got like these rates from 2021. And you look at individual schools, you only have like a 6.2% chance of getting into any one Ivy. So the best way to shoulder your odds there is to apply to as many as possible, right? Because if you do that, and let's say that all of these probabilities are independent probabilities, but all these are independent probabilities, I can statistically calculate out that actually, if I play to all of them, I have a 34. 8% chance of getting into at least one of them. So my number one tip, again, is apply to more of them because then you're gonna go from this like 5% chance of getting into any of them to a almost 35% chance, which isn't as bad. Tip number two is have a wow factor. I have whole videos on the wow factor, but basically in a nutshell, if you don't wanna watch that video and you want the cliff notes, it's a real cool activity that makes you look super, super awesome. One of the best ways that you can really run to the top of the pile is to have something that you do or some accomplishment that you've made that's super amazing and awesome, whether that's doing COVID-19 research. Yes, I had a student last year who did COVID-19 research and she got into her first choice university. Or you show excellence in some incredible way. That could mean that you are on the national team for your sport. It could mean that you won some kind of incredible award. It could mean that you've been recognized on TV for some weird, incredible talent. It could mean that you just have really amazing something that you've started. Maybe you're a leader and you created something that's really huge and that's touched thousands of people's lives. The other thing that can kind of get you in as well, but it's not as great as the wow factor, is if you have just like standard strong activities at your high school. And what I mean by that is that you're, you know, ASB president, editor of the school paper, debate team captain, or you're like the best player and the captain of your team, et cetera. That can get you in. Those standard strong kind of activities from school, they can get you in, but it's increasingly harder depending on how many other factors you have waiting for you or weighing against you, right? And we're gonna talk about some of those other factors now, 
which is my alternative to having a wow factor, which is to have an edge. Number one edge is an underrepresented minority. If you're from an underrepresented group, that can be an edge. And then as long as you hit kind of the other things and you have decent essays, you got a good shot. Edge number two is you're from a random state in the middle of the country. Thumbs up if you're from Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Ohio, Wyoming, Utah. If you're from a random state in the middle, or you're from a state where you've got more senators than House of Representatives representatives, you're probably in luck. And you're probably underrepresented at this college or university. There are some colleges and universities that really want sort of like state by state diversity. They want to take one person from every state. There's other colleges that will reject the whole state. So it kind of depends college by college, but chances are, again, if you apply to all the Ivies, there's a couple of them that want that kind of every state diversity. They want to brag that they got 48 out of 50 states or 50 out of 50 states. So if you're that person from Wyoming, congratulations. Okay, next on my list is first generation low income. If you are low income and or a first generation college student, meaning your parents didn't go to college, there should be a box that you check when you apply to college. And that box is really important to check if it is true, because that will give you a leg up. Legacy status. Legacy status usually means your parent went to that college or university. Some schools will also give you legacy status if you have a sibling or a grandparent that attended, or if your parent is a current faculty member. I find that legacy matters more at places like Harvard and Penn than some of the other schools, but it doesn't mean that the other schools don't engage in legacy practices. All the Ivies have some kind of legacy thing going on. Usually to take advantage of legacy, you're going to need to apply, however, early meaning you're going to have to REA or ED in order to reap the benefits of that legacy status. So something to keep in mind. When I see legacy students applying, I expect an admission rate closer to 30% versus those like ridiculous 5% admission rates we were looking at. Cool. Next on my list is relationships with admissions deans, and that could be your relationship, your parents' relationship, or your school counselor's relationship. Something like that can be a little bit of an edge. Having kind of a funky little academic interest, right? Maybe you're into Russian language and literature or religious studies or the classics, or you know, you have some other kind of very niche topic that you want to major in that only this college offers that not a lot of people are into. That can be an edge for you when you're trying to get admitted. Next on my list is athletic ability of a caliber to be recruited or walk onto the team. The recruiting has kind of diminished a lot over the last few years. I'm seeing less and less recruiting availability for my students who are good athletes. But even if you're a good enough athlete to walk on the team, some of these schools also will have coaches write letters for you, even if you're not going to be recruited. And sometimes that can weigh on the scale a little bit, give you a little bit of an extra edge. Next up on my list is write a wow essay and make every essay count. You want all your essays to be awesome, basically. I don't want to see essays that are just like, passable. I want to see every essay have some zing to it, as I like to say. We've got a whole video on how to write a wow essay, so I would recommend that you check that out. But the goal is to make sure, on the one hand, you sound like a teenager and that your mom didn't write your essay for you, and on the other hand, be wonderfully intelligent, entertaining, and captivating so that the person who reads your essay thinks, wow, I want to be this person's friend. This kid sounds really smart. I think this person's going to change the world, right? One or all of those three things, if I think those things when I read your essays, you're in a really good position. Next on my list is to prove your intellect. I think one of the characteristics that I see of almost all my students that end up getting into an Ivy League school is at some point in their application, particularly in the essays, they prove their sort of academic prowess in some way. And what I mean by that is that they don't just approach these essays with sort of this flippant, shallow, here's me, and I like this, and this is fun, but they go a level deeper. There's some level of personal awareness, of analysis, of thoughtfulness, of point of view, right? That there's really a perspective, and that perspective is an engaged, critical thinker. And that brings me to my final point, which is I want you guys to somehow show your vision. And what I mean by vision is I want you to see the world as a bigger place than just the things that you have done. I want you to see how can you have an impact in the world? What's going on in the world around you that you want to change or that you want to, you know, make a difference in? You're trying to connect, by the way, with admissions people who are in their 20s, in their 30s, in their 40s, maybe 50s or 60s. These are people who are older than you, who live in the real world who have political opinions, who have, you know, cultural thoughts, and you need to connect with them. And the way to connect with them is to have an awareness of the world outside of your bubble 
and to integrate that awareness somehow into your application in an intelligent way that can connect with more people than just your teenage mind, right? You need to reach outside of yourself and say something or talk about ideas that are somehow universal and compelling. And if you can do that, well, cool. You may just get an Ivy League admission letter. So there you guys go. Those are some tips from me on what are all kind of the pieces that go together to make a really compelling Ivy League application and how you can maximize your ability to get into an Ivy League school. I hope you guys like this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. And if you have ideas for videos, put them in the comments below this video. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Subscribe for more videos and I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.